Hi guys, it's Wendy. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a separate video that addresses my feelings and my thoughts about what's going on in the world. I have no idea what's about to come out of my mouth. Um, it's been a hard year for everybody and uh, nobody could have expected what was going to hit us in 2020, but we have COVID. We have, we're dealing with a worldwide pandemic and um, we are in various levels of re-emerging after being in quarantine or quasi-quarantine. Um, I know that where we are in Orange County, we had a bunch of protesters that wanted the economy going, you know, gangbusters again. And so our um, Orange County um, representatives, we, we're, we're opening back up, you know, people just want to get the economy going. So I was able to get my hair cut last week i was in no rush to do it but my hairdresser contacted me and she she said uh you know we're up and running and you know you missed your appointment in march because we had to cancel it so come on in so she wore a face shield i wore a mask um you know that you can't have overlapping clients and there's more social distancing and you know my hair didn't get blow dried and stuff like that like you know, and I didn't want to rush Stephanie. It's like, you know, whatever, but you know, it, it, it happened and we were all just being safe. And so I felt comfortable doing that. Um, we're trying to get restaurants back up and running. And I see that as of next weekend, that nail salons are going to be authorized to reopen with new regulations. So there's that. And then, um, of course there was the George Floyd murder um and all of the protests and um that continue to the to this day um without um without the people are not relenting and um for those of you that may or may not know my husband is black i've been married to him for seven years now we've been together for 10 years and we live in south orange county and um it's funny because he and I, we never talk about race. It's just not something that's important to us to discuss. Uh, but this has opened up a whole new level of conversation in our marriage. Um, we get together at the end of the day and because there's no sports on, he's watching a lot of news and I'm actually working full time at my office. So I'll come and you know hang out with him for a couple hours towards the end of the day and we just kind of catch up on things and talk about things. But I said to him the other day, I said, um, let me ask you something. I said, we've never talked about this, but have you ever felt discriminated against being with me like out in public? And he got quiet and then he said there was once. And I was surprised by this, but you know, before we bought this house, we looked at a number of houses. We looked at, I don't know, 50 to 100 houses, a lot. And there was this one house in the city where we live now where um, it was kind of a weird house, but it was kind of cool too. There was a pool in the front courtyard and and we walked in and we were kind of looking at it and it needed a lot of work. So we we're walking around and I went off to go look at some other stuff. And the white realtor came to my black husband and said, you know, the owners will never sell to you. And Jay said, well, how, why is that? And they said, they don't want black people on the street. And Jay, Jay shared that with me this week. And I said, why did you say something to me? That's illegal. You cannot discriminate against somebody in a real estate transaction based on their race or gender, ethnicity, any of that. That's it. Like that's against the law. I would have reported him. And he said, well, it's not important. He says, if we really wanted that house, we would have fought for it, but you know, whatever. And then there was one instance, I remember the both of us in um, Newport Beach, we were going to Tommy Bahama's restaurant, uh, kind of like a more upscale restaurant. And there were these two older white guys that gave us a lot of grief. Since then, of course, there's been covert and there's been overt racism, even amongst my really good friends. Um, I've been posting a lot on Instagram support of Black Lives Matter and how important this is to me. Um, and I've been getting some pushback and I posted on Instagram. I said, if you don't like me doing this, if you don't want me to uh, use my voice, I don't consider myself an influencer. I'm not that big. I'm, I don't have that ego. I don't, you know, but I will use my voice to support oppressed people, um, discriminated people, in any way shape or form and without apologies so if you don't like it you can unsubscribe you can unfollow me so um, when I posted that I did lose a couple hundred followers I don't care I don't make any money off Instagram I don't it's just my place to go and have fun and, and connect with people and 
really, I am loving the dialogues and the conversations that I'm having with people. This morning, I woke up to probably 40 DMs of people sending me videos and people wanting to have conversations about this and people, uh, you know, people are frustrated and people are feeling hopeless. I'm the opposite right now. I'm feeling hopeful. I feel like I'm in my 50s now. I feel like when I was a little girl, I was very idealistic and I felt like I'm going to change the world. My generation is going to change the world. We're, you know, it, we're going to do great things. And I feel like, you know what? No, my generation, we failed you. Anyone who's younger than me, we failed you. We failed you on climate change. We failed you politically. We changed, we failed you economically. We have failed you in so many ways, but we've mostly failed you in regarding race relations. And, um, and I feel like I'm, I'm so inspired and awestruck by what the young people are doing. Like we had protests in the city where I work and they were all peaceful and beautiful. Like the energy and the love and just the desire to affect change and to fix all the shit that we've broken um, was really awe-inspiring. In the city where I live, there were a thousand protesters this week that marched up and down the main the main drag here that were accompanied by police. Um, the city where I work, there were impassioned speeches and they gave a round of applause to the police that protect our city. They're being very respectful, very kind, very supportive, very loving, and they are energized and I love it. Um, you know, the rioting has been um, unfortunate um, but I do want you guys to know that a lot of the rioting is not happening by black people in their own neighborhoods. A lot of the rioting is happening by white people that are going into black neighborhoods and destroying them. So people need to check their white privilege and people need to check their stereotypes and their assumptions. And if I lose followers and if I lose subscribers because of my stance and because of my support of Black Lives Matter, then so be it. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't make a lot of money on my YouTube channel. I don't, I don't care. What's more important to me is that my beautiful black husband is not discriminated against when we walk into, you know, homes that we're considering buying, that my husband and I can go to a restaurant in Newport Beach and not have two older white people giving us grief about it. I want everyone to feel safe and I want everyone to feel supported. And um, that's more important to me than anything else. Um, I have people that are very close to me in my family that uh, the shit they say to me, I'm sorry, I've sworn twice in this video and I don't really care. Um, there's somebody in my family who hated Obama and thinks that Trump is going to save the children and that Obama is a reptilian and that the Democrats um, kidnap babies and eat their pituitary glands. I am not kidding you. People are going to look online, they're gonna get on the internet and they're gonna find whatever it is. You know, the world is your mirror, right? The world is your mirror. Whatever is in your own heart is gonna be reflected out in there. So if your heart is full of whatever, that's what you're going to see and that's what you're going to find out there. Um, but I, I've been hearing her tell me these stories and trying to have rational conversations with her and trying to have reasonable conversations with her and saying, I don't deal with conspiracy theories. If you want to give me facts and if you want to show me evidence, then you and I can have a conversation. But if you're putting on your tinfoil hat and you're telling me that Obama is a reptilian and that the Clintons and the Obamas are part of some deep state that kidnap babies and eat their pituitary glands and you and I have not, no conversation to have. We There's nowhere for us to go. And so it doesn't matter if you, you know, my best friend here in Orange County has been, been posting just ridiculous stuff on Facebook. Like of all the things that she can post, she just finds the stuff that supports white lives matter and anti-black lives matter. And I'm just like, come on now this is not the time this is the time for us to show our black sisters and brothers and loved ones and friends and foes support 
And um, I know that a lot of my other friends in the luxury community, um, not friends, but other influencers or other people in the luxury community are avoiding this topic. And they're saying that they just, you know, they go to YouTube and Instagram as uh, as an escape and they don't want to talk about that. I'm sorry. You know what? No. What that means is that you're not, you're choosing, you're consciously choosing not to support. And what that means is that it's because you don't support the Black Lives Matter and that you're just hiding behind it. And you're just trying to be politically correct. You do you, but it's becoming more and more obvious what's in people's hearts. And um, I shot this whole video last weekend. I was walking through, uh, I was on my usual Sunday walk and I was kind of drizzly and I was just talking about stuff and then like this, but I got home and I actually lost my nerve and I didn't post it. But I will tell you that I watched, it took me about a week and a half to watch the George Floyd video. I had seen little bits of it, but I, I watched it. And after I watched it, I was crying so hard that, and shuddering. Like I couldn't, I couldn't catch my breath and which is ironic. And I just like, I just felt that in every molecule of my being that Chauvin callously and with callous disregard for George Floyd, he murdered that man. He murdered him on purpose. And watching it and then afterwards, you know, he was just callously having his hands in his pockets. He didn't care. He didn't care that people were watching him. I'm sure that he was shocked that he got fired. I'm sure that he was shocked that there was the outrage that there was. I'm sure that he's shocked that he got arrested. I'm sure that he was shocked that there was any pushback or repercussions to him. And the way that he strutted around after killing George, and then learning that he had like 18 other complaints against him, you know, it, it was just something, it was a place that we couldn't come back from. And, um, and just, you know, the funerals were heartbreaking, weren't they? Like George Floyd had a family that came from humble place that loved him very much. And yeah, he had his issues and he struggled in different ways, but he was a father. He was a son. He was a brother. He had many people that loved him and Derek Chauvin didn't care. He just decided that he was going to kill him that day. And he did. And he did it in broad daylight and he did it in the middle of a street. And he didn't care that people had their video cameras out and he didn't care because he didn't think there were going to be any repercussions for him. And so that was our call to action. Um, we need justice for him. We need justice for Brianna Taylor. We need justice for all of them, all of them. And this movement is not going to end and it's not going to stop until we get justice. Um, I think that the next, um, for the rest of the year, I think that the next six months is going to be very, very, very uncomfortable up until the election for both covert and overt racists. Um, I think that the rhetoric is going to get um, awful. Watch yourself on Facebook, watch yourself in social media, just be careful, protect your energy. Um, um, but know that change is coming. I have friends, people, I don't know that I call them friends, but I have people that I work with and just people that are in my life who are both covert and overt racists. And um, even they have come to me and have said things to me that give me hope for the future. So uh, I think people's hearts are being opened up and um, I don't really want to engage with people about this issue. I will talk to you guys on other videos. I don't, because it's too close to me. So I may or may not respond to a lot of the comments that are below. It's just going to depend upon how much I want to immerse myself in this today and going forward. But um, just know that for all my black brothers and sisters, I support you. I love you. And I'm not going to stop supporting and loving you. And um, I'm going to use my voice to raise up yours. Uh, let's see if I have the guts to post this. I don't know if I will, but if I lose subscribers and followers because of it, it doesn't really matter to me because you guys, it's fine. Um, uh, I have to go. I have an appointment and um, be safe out there if you guys are protesting. Okay, bye.